and welcome back to another episode of Handloader TV with me, your host, Jeremiah. And in this episode, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the FN 502 Tactical Chambered In 22 Long Rifle. Now I know what you're thinking. Why are we doing a video reviewing a 22 Long Rifle or Rimfire handgun when this is Handloader TV? However, I have three really good answers for you. And the first one is, at the time of this filming, this is a brand new offering from FN. And also, there's a lot of shortages of ammunition and hand loading components, and a 22 long rifle can be a great alternative to still hit the range and get your reps in and your practice in and your drills and all that kind of stuff without breaking the bank because 22 long rifle is relatively inexpensive to practice with and to shoot. And the other reason is we recently did a video on the FN 509 Tactical. And these two guns are very similar. The 509 is the basis for the 502. This is a 9mm striker fired handgun, which we've done a previous video on, and I would encourage you guys to check it out. There's a lot of good information in that video. And as you can see here, looking at these two firearms, they are extremely similar. The grips, the same ambidextrous controls, they're very similar. So you can train with this 22 without breaking the bank, and a lot of that training will carry over to your FN 509 9mm carry gun. So they kind of complement each other, and we thought it would be really neat to do a video on both of those. So on that note, let's go ahead and take a closer look at some of the features and the interesting things about this 502 Tactical. So taking a closer look at the gun here, starting out with the frame, it is a polymer framed handgun and the frame is actually made by Umarix, which I found very interesting. It is a single action hammer fired pistol and that means it has a pretty good trigger and I was pretty shocked. I had an average of five pulls on this Wheeler Engineering trigger pull gauge here. The trigger broke very cleanly and crisply at two pounds, 6.4 ounces which I thought was extraordinarily good for a 22 handgun. And that's kind of something in other handguns I've noticed, especially in the 22s, trigger pulls can be pretty rough, especially in these polymer frame guns. But this one, it's very nice. And let's go ahead and demonstrate that for you. We're clear. And I don't recommend dry firing rim fires, but for the video's sake, we're going to go ahead and do it. So there's the take up there, minimal take up. And as you can see, that's very crisp, very clean. We're gonna do that one more time. There's the take up. So as you can see for yourself, very nice trigger on this gun. I was pleasantly surprised. Now FN actually advertises these guns to have a five pound trigger pull but I've heard a lot of reports of people coming back saying it's lighter. So I don't think this is necessarily a fluke. Also rolling along, we have an aluminum slide here and all the same ambidextrous controls that are on the FN 509 are present on this FN 502. Ambidextrous safety, ambidextrous slide release, and ambidextrous magazine release. And also, Included with the gun are two magazines, one 10 round, which is in the gun, and one 15 round magazine included in the package, which is really nice. Now, if you live in a little bit more oppressive state, they do sell a package that comes with two 10 round magazines. Rolling right along here, we have uh, aluminum slide and suppressor height night sights, a 5.5 inch sight radius, and we have their signature threaded barrel on here with the O-ring, which is a really nice feature because it prevents you from losing these thread protectors and it also helps keep your suppressor on during prolonged use. So I really like that there. And this is one of the few 22s on the market that comes optics ready. This plate here, you can remove it and mount a Trijicon RMR or a Vortex Venom or whatever be your preference when it comes to red dot sight systems and included with the firearm are a bunch of different adapter plates, screws, different height sights, 
different rear sights. So you have plenty of options when it comes to this particular handgun. When it comes to disassembling your pistol, it's a relatively simple and straightforward process. So let's go ahead and walk you through that real quick. Starting out, the first thing to do is to lock the slide to the rear and go ahead and remove that magazine. From here, I like to remove the thread protector because in order to remove the barrel, you will have to remove the thread protector. I'll set that to the side. And then just like any other striker fired handgun say, you have a takedown lever, very similar to the FN 509. Turn that lever down, drop your slide, and the slide will pop off without having to pull the trigger, which I like. From there you have your recoil spring and guide rod. And this is plastic, which I am not a big fan of any plastic parts on a handgun, but with it being a 22, I think they can probably get away with that. But I'd love to replace that eventually with a metal guide rod, should that ever be offered. Just a personal preference of mine. Then you can remove the barrel, clean it out, do what you need to do there, put some oil on it, and you're good to go. Reassembly is very simple. Insert the barrel back in there. Make sure that this little guide rod, it has a uh, recessed portion here, and this side is flat. The side with the recessed rim goes forward. Pop that on. And then you can return your frame and slide. Lock that to the rear, like so. Return your takedown lever right here. And make sure that slide is completely locked to the rear, otherwise that lever will not go back. So now that that's back, you can reinstall your thread protector. Perform a safety check and function test and you're good to go. So all in all, it's a relatively simple and straightforward process. Lastly, it weighs one pound of five ounces. So it's a lightweight handgun. And I'm really excited to hit the range with this thing. We actually do have a suppressor. The suppressor we're gonna be shooting is the Dead Air Mask HD suppressor. And it's rated for full auto 22 long rifle and you can shoot even 5.7 by 28 through it. So it's a pretty neat suppressor and I'm excited to put that to the test. And there is one more very important thing that I should point out. We have a ton of different ammunition that we're gonna run through this gun. And for the sake of time, we're only going to show you the suppressed shooting scenes where we're shooting the gun suppressed, but we're also going to shoot it unsuppressed. And when we get to the end of this video where we compare the targets, we're gonna show you both the suppressed target and the unsuppressed target along with the velocity and the ammunition used. So you'll be able to com contrast and compare between different ammunitions and whether the handgun was suppressed or not. So on that note, as usual, the target will be downrange at 15 yards and we'll be using an Ailer Model 35P chronograph set up 10 feet from the muzzle to record all of our velocities. So on that note, let's take this out to the range. So now we've gone ahead and threaded on the suppressor, the dead air mask onto this FN 502. And we've got Winchester M22 long rifle ammunition, 40 grain projectile. And we're gonna see how it does with the suppressor. Okay, that's pretty great. Not gonna lie, that's a that's awesome. That is that is super quiet. There are 
no reason I need these hearing protection. It, it almost sounds like a, like a pellet rifle to me. Now we're returning to the Norma USA TAC-22, 22 long rifle ammunition. This is a 40 grain lead round nose bullet. And we'll see how this guy does through the suppressor. Here we go. All right, so we've gone ahead and moved on back to the Federal Champion 22 long rifle. This is a solid lead round nose 40 grain projectile and advertised velocity is 1,240 feet per second. With the suppressor on, let's see how this stuff does. I have a hunch it'll be a little bit louder, but let's see. Louder than what you'd expect anyway. Here we go. All right, so we got the suppressor threaded back on here, and we've got the CCI Quiet 22 segmented hollow point 40 grain projectile with an advertised velocity of 710 feet per second. So these did not function without the suppressor. So let's go ahead and see if they function with the suppressor and see if we can maintain that good accuracy. All right. Doesn't look like it cycled the action. It ejected, but it did not feed another round. Same deal. And there we have it, there's our five rounds. With the suppressor attached, we're back to the Gemtech Silencer Subsonic Ammunition 22 long rifle using a 42 grain lead round nose projectile and an advertised velocity of 1,020 feet per second. All right, this shot really well unsuppressed and it cycled the action very nicely. So I'm quite excited to see how it does with the suppressor. Here we go.
All right, there's our five rounds. Rolling right along, testing out the suppressor. We're using Federal American Eagle 22 long rifle ammunition with a 45 grain copper plated round nose or CR or CPRN projectile with an advertised velocity of 970 feet per second. And as always, the proof's on the paper, so let's see how it groups. All right. So with the suppressor threaded on, we've swapped back over to the SK flat nose target ammunition and we'll go ahead and put it on the paper and see how it performs. There we go. All right. That is out of the box, no sight adjustments, just shooting at steel. Perfectly zeroed from the factory. The pig's at about 25 yards, by the way. So we're back at the bench now, and we've had some time to crunch the numbers and take a look at things. And there's a couple things I want to share with you right off the bat after shooting this gun. We put about 400 to 500 rounds through it put it through its paces, and it performed really well. We did have a few malfunctions, and every one of those was ammunition related. Uh, the Winchester M22, I had a couple of duds and a couple of light loads. You could actually feel it. I don't know if it was a light powder charge or what, but you could, you could tell it was quieter, and the bullet was always impacting low. And so we did have a couple of hangups, but all of them were ammunition related. Other than that, the gun functioned 100%. It was very reliable and it performed really well. We've got some really interesting and really cool targets to take a look at. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. Taking a look at the first target, I should point out this particular handgun does have a 4.6 inch barrel, a 1 in 16 right hand twist, and it has a target crown. So I was really kind of expecting some pretty good velocity out of it and good accuracy. So, the first ammunition, the Winchester M22, performed relatively well here. We got uh, almost all of our loads here without the suppressor were subsonic. With the suppressor, I think we had one that may or may not have broken that sound barrier at 1091 feet per second, but very consistent group size of 1.74 unsuppressed and 1.72 suppressed. So relatively consistent, and this is just bulk plinking ammunition, and it did a pretty good job as far as accuracy and performance goes, other than those few that either failed to fire or were light loads and failed to cycle the action. So rolling along to the next target that we shot here, 
We used Norma USA TAC-22, the 40 grain lead round nose. And we got, uh, all of this was completely subsonic, so this is a subsonic ammunition in that short 4.6 inch barrel, which is really good to know. And the standard deviations and extreme spreads on this ammunition were not fantastic, but uh, unsuppressed we got a 2.41 inch group, 3 into 0.41 inches, and then suppressed we got a 2.45 inch group. So all in all not that great, but I have shot this ammunition out of rifles with a lot better accuracy than that. So, taking a look at our next target, we swapped on over to Federal Champion 22 Long Rifle, 40 grain lead round nose, or solid as they advertise it at. And a lot of these are right on the cusp of being supersonic. And without the suppressor, we got a group size of 2.66 inches. And with the suppressor, it actually shrunk the group size down from over 2.5 inches down to 1.41 inches. So that's kind of neat to see the suppressor actually help with accuracy. But all in all, we didn't have very uh, consistent results with this ammunition or consistent velocities, and that could have a lot to do with that too. I've noticed just personally when it comes to 22 long rifle ammunition, it seems like you can get an awful lot of flyers when it comes to testing it. So rolling along to our next ammunition that we tried, it was a relatively interesting ammunition. This is the CCI 22 long rifle, quiet 22 with a segmented hollow point, and this is their small game version. And this performed very well unsuppressed, but not very well suppressed. We got a 1.46 inch group size. Um, when it was unsuppressed and 2.70 inches when suppressed. And I need to emphasize this, it failed to cycle the action on the handgun, but it's not really designed to cycle the action. I think this ammunition has great application in like a bolt action and not so much in a semi-auto. And I do believe they make an actual version of the Quiet 22 that is designed to cycle in semi-automatic firearms. So that'd be something to look into. But it's also one of the few ammunitions we tested that has an expanding bullet, that segmented hollow point. And that's a pretty great option if you're looking to maybe exterminate some local pests such as rodents or birds that are getting into feed or whatever that may be. Rolling right along to the next ammunition we tried was Gemtech Silencer Subsonic 22 long rifle with a 42 grain lead round nose projectile. And all of this, of course, was subsonic. And unsuppressed, we got an outstanding group size. Again, this is at 15 yards with a 22 handgun. It was a 0.81 inch group. So I was very pleased with that. And suppressed, the group size did open up a little bit to 1.40 inches. But still, I don't consider that all that bad for a 22 handgun at 15 yards. The next ammunition that we went ahead and tried was Federal American Eagle 22 long rifle with a 45 grain copper plated round nose projectile. And this was again designed to be shot with a suppressor because it is subsonic ammunition. And all of our velocities were below that sound barrier. And when we shot it unsuppressed, we got a 0.97 inch group, very good. And when we shot it suppressed, it was a 2.17 inch group but I did notice we had a lot of cold bore shots and first round flyers. And if I remember correctly, this uh, one flyer up there that opened up the group was a cold bore. I'd have to go back and double check, but I'm pretty sure that's the case with this. So if you remove that flyer, it equals out to a 0.69 inch group. All in all, I'd say that's pretty good. The next ammunition that we tried and the final ammunition was SK Target Ammunition. This is a flat nose projectile, which you don't see a whole lot of when it comes to 22. And unsuppressed, we got a group size of 1.10 inches. And when we suppressed it, we got a group size of 1.50 inches. So all in all, I'm very pleased with the accuracy of this pistol. It's more than sufficient for training purposes, which is really what this pistol was designed for. But seeing this accuracy, it also makes me want to shoot it a lot more and maybe take it out as a backup squirrel gun or something like that. Or if I need to use it to hunt some varmints on my property, uh, it'd be a fun choice to take out. 
So in my parting thoughts on this pistol, overall, I really like it. It fits my hands very well. It's very comparable to the FN 509, which I enjoy shooting. And this has a much better trigger with it being a single action hammer fired pistol compared to the striker fired pistol. So I'm pleasantly surprised with that. And the, the gun just simply performs very well. And I've been impressed with it. There are some interesting things about it that we noticed, you know, shooting it suppressed, the velocity difference between the advertised velocities of these 22s. A lot of regular 22 ammunition is subsonic, so you can take this bulk Winchester thread on your suppressor and you don't need to buy subsonic specific 22 ammo, which is kind of neat, out of that 4.6 inch barrel. And also, one thing that I should point out, these sights came perfectly zeroed out of the factory. I did not have to make any drifts on them or any kind of adjustments for them. They just were dead on right out of the gate, and I can really appreciate that. The uh, first time I shot the handgun, I loaded up 15 rounds into the magazine. I took it out, and I just was plinking away, and it targets from 5 yards to 35 yards. I hit every single one of them every time, and that's really a testament to the quality that they put into and the effort they put into zeroing these guns out of the factory. So on that note, I'll leave you with this. It's up to you whether you think this is a great addition, but if you have an FN 509, I would strongly consider adding a 502 to the collection as well. But of course, we report you decide that's entirely up to you. I do want to thank you guys for watching this video. We greatly appreciate it. If you liked it, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe and leave a comment. I do my very best to read and respond to every one of those comments. It might take me a little bit, but I will get to it eventually. So thank you so much, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.